All right, it's about time to start our lecture tonight. And tonight we are doing chess 108. We're going to be using major pieces. We're going to introduce major pieces to our students and um, see how they like that and, you know, give them, give them some experience with that. Now, where, oh, where, oh, where did their picture go? Huh. I should normally be able to see their pictures. Let me stop sharing real quick. There they are. All right. And we'll go back to um, sharing the screen so they can see what I'm seeing. And then we'll get started on the lesson. All right. I don't know why their picture is hiding from me, but it is. It's kind of humorous, actually. Uh, usually I get to see it. I don't know why it's not. But, all right, guys. So, A. Ratchet, our first chatter. Yes, it is you. <laughs> yes, I'm hoping. So far, I got solid green. So, I think it was just a bad day of internet the other day when, when you noticed and I noticed and it was not working well. So, um, hopefully we should have a good day as far as the internet goes. So, we're working on minor pieces. So, uh, is everyone in my Zoom me meeting in attendance? Are you, can you guys hear me? Hopefully you're there. Yes. All right. Um, so, is that John? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, your your um, name on your screen fooled me. Uh-oh. Chess with Chris must be arriving. Oh, and Chess with Chris. So, here is... Let me go full screen real quick before we start the lesson. You were helping me with the sound effects. And where to go? Mm, I had it here. And now it seems to be missing. My other panel. Let me just see if it's hiding somewhere. Yeah, okay. So here's my... Here it is, right? The sound alerts. And it says I can open the dashboard but it says there's a panel. I don't see how to make these available. Oh, it did work? Okay, so you see the sound something? Where do you see them? Is it on the about page? Oh, okay, on the bottom of the about page. So if I go to the, if I go to the channel, I'll see it too. Because I want to be able to play it. I mean, that was part of the fun. I, I wanted to have access to it. Ah, ha, 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 there it is. Only you will hear it? Why is that? Oh, that's the preview. Play on the stream. Hey, hey, all right. So I guess that's the way I have to play and you guys can play that sound. I'm gonna have to go to that. That's odd, but okay. I might have to switch them around a little bit. I might, you know what? I could put, um, if nothing else, I could put Hello Darkness, My Old Friend, put Chess Wizard's theme song out there because he could find it. All right, guys, I've stalled long enough. Let's get to the lesson. I do have a tournament set up for you guys. And it's for uh, my, for all of you guys in the lesson. So you could join that tournament whenever you're ready. And if you guys want to join, as long as you're uh, like 1600 or lower, there's the rating for that one. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same. It's like 100 bits or something. Uh, it's not bits. It should be channel points. Should be channel points. Oh, it does say bits. Uh, well, it's free for me. So maybe I'll just play it for now. It's supposed to have been channel points. I'll have to check on that. All right. Yeah, I got to change that to channel. It's supposed to be channel points. All right, guys, we're going to talk about um, major pieces. So let me get a screen with major pieces on it. So major pieces are rooks and queens, guys. Rooks and queens. And the thing to know about these are how they move and why they're considered major versus minor. So all the pieces we had up to this point so let me pull up quickly. Okay, in our analysis board, we have all the pieces on the screen, right? And when we look at this, oops, let's go back to lecture mode. Thank you very much. Um, 
These pieces are called our minor pieces, and they're worth, if you remember, three points each. Three points each. Thanks, Chris. I'll do that. Uh, these are worth three points each. Pawns are worth one point each. All right, so they're definitely not close to major, right? So these are pawns, and they're just called points, pawns. We don't even call them pieces for the most part. Then we have pieces, and we call these the minor pieces, and they're three points each. Then we have major pieces, and the rooks are worth five each, guys, five each. And then I say the queen is worth ten. Now, you go look at most books and uh, latest in the last couple of ye 20 years or so, uh, people are saying the queen is 9, and now computers are saying it's 9.5. And the problem with you thinking of the queen as 9 or 9.5 is that that means the two rooks are worth more than the queen. And you should eagerly trade your queen to win two rooks because then you'd be winning by 0.5 or one whole point. And this is true at a certain level that you can take advantage of it. And we're going to show you how that plays. So as a beginner, all of you guys are beginners, we're learning how pieces move, we're learning the values of the pieces. I recommend highly that we're gonna treat the queen as 10. And the reason we're gonna treat it as 10 is because beginners especially feel lost without the queen. And I don't know of any beginner that would rather have the two rooks than the queen. So we're gonna go with the queen versus is 10. <sighs> Okay, um, the queen is usually also wor uh, worse than three minor pieces at a certain level, which is interesting because minor pieces are still nine. Three of them are nine. But what happens is, and this is the same reason why I would tell you guys that a uh, line like this, and I'll show it to you, a line like this is not good for you right here. So a lot of beginners, don't ask me why, they think this is good for them. And you end up, you end up with the pawn and the rook for the knight and the bishop. All right? So you end up with six points. These two are six points, three each, versus six points, five plus one. So it looks like it should be an even trade, right? Six for six, so what's wrong with that? The thing that's wrong with that is you lost two pieces for one. Also, rooks normally don't come into play until near the end game. Definitely they don't come into play until you reach the middle game because your idea is that you want to castle and get those rooks talking. So you got to get the queen off the back rank, the bishop off the back rank, and the knight off the back rank just so the rooks can talk. And the rooks don't become powerful until we open up a file and then stack, we call it stacking the rooks so that they can attack together. So it usually takes a long time, middle game to early end game, before rooks even come into play. So meantime, black has four minor pieces versus two. And minor pieces, as you know, come into play immediately. In the opening and definitely in the early middle game, minor pieces are powerful. And so black is going to be able to get these minor pieces into the game and probably back it up with the queen. And those minor pieces will dominate just these two minor pieces for a considerable amount of time. So I try to get my beginners not to make this trade, even though they think, well, I got a rook and a pawn. Yeah, and I even made the king exposed. Yeah, but I'm down to just two minor pieces to play with. And if you got all the way to the end game, think about it. You'd have a pawn and a rook, let's say, against a knight and a bishop. They're going to be able to take that pawn. They're going to be able to uh, draw at least. And if you have more pawns to play with, a rook and a bishop or two bishops or two knights versus one rook, those two pieces can attack on two different sides of the board, can help each other, can be dynamic. So we mark the queen as 10. But that said, still rooks are 5, queens are 10. They're still major pieces. They're still stronger pieces. So, you might say, well, how do I use those pieces? We're going to do that. We're going to have you play with the major pieces. Uh, but first, before we play with the major pieces, we're going to do a little quick tournament where you're going to actually play, play with this setup, where it's going to be bishops, 
versus knights. That's the only last one we didn't do when we were doing minor piece play last time. So let me review why the difference is between knights and bishops. We'll get you guys into the little tournament and you'll get to practice with this. Remember that bishops like open diagonals. And remember we did bishops against bishops. And we did bishops and knights against bishops and knights. So you should get that feel. But this is going to give you the feel of how a bishop could try to control a knight and how a knight could try to take advantage of closed spaces. So I'll give you hints right away. A white wants to push pawns so the bishops can become free. And white wants to trade pawns, not all of them, but trade a few pawns so that the bishops have open lines. We want open lines for our bishops. Bishops also attack long distance. So your opponent might do things like forget that his pawn is free to be attacked and leave this one here. So they'll miss long distance attacks. Well, knights are up close. But the thing about knights, right, the thing about knights is, although they're up close, and let's say we're just doing this, um, while they're up close, they are so tricky, right? They attack these squares, and if you allow that knight to hop to another square, it's going to attack the opposite color. So it's on black, that means it attacks white. And once it goes from there to white, it now attacks black. And it will, can go back and then attack different squares. So knights are what we call tricksy. And so, but knights don't care about closed positions. You can have all these pawns locked up and black is happy because his knight can jump around and over the pawns, while the bishops need to have clean space. And if you look, this bishop now can't get over here, right? That bishop can't get over there because we blocked him out. That bishop is only relegated to this side of the board for now. While the knight, of course, can hop over here, then it can hop back, it can go wherever he wants. So we're gonna try games with, with the white pieces, with the bishops, and you're going to try games with black pieces with the knights. All right. All right. So, again, uh, anyone can play. Prefer uh, you want to learn, right? You're, you're here to learn. So, uh, But anyone can play. So let me get you the link. And we're hoping for uh, lower rated. But if you're higher rated, then understand we are learning and it's, and it's beginners. I want to do this first. I'm going to up this so it starts sooner. And then after we do this for a half an hour, then we're going to talk about rooks. We're going to get into rooks, going to show you some examples, and then we'll play some games with the rooks. Next week, we'll do rooks versus, well, we'll do queens, and then we'll do rooks versus queens. So a reminder, queens move just like kings. The only difference between a rook and a, I mean, a queen and a king, right? They're the royalty is that the queen has no limit. It can go as far as it can go. So that queen can go all the way out here. While the king can only move one square at a time. So the king can only move one square at a time while the queen can go as far as she can. So the queen has no stopping. They can go all the way till they, like if there's a piece here, they or even if there's his own piece, now I can only go this far. All right, so queens move the same way, every direction. And they move, some people like to say they move like a rook and they move like a bishop. And they can change colors. They don't move like a knight. But the king also can move every direction. And the only difference is the king can only move one square. All right, hopefully that's clear. All right, so we want to, we want to have you uh, sign up for the tournament. So let me change the for live stream. Well, actually, let's get some more people signed up first. Because we don't want the tournament starting. I, I can make it start in two minutes, but there's nobody in it yet. So all of my real life students, uh, please sign up for the tournament. Thank you, Murph. And I put it in the chat and I can put it out there again. Keith, you could sign up for it even though you're playing a blitz game to get your blitz rating. All right, okay. thanks, Keith. All right, and we don't see Irv yet, so I'm not going to put it back out. In the, well, I'll put it in the chat again, but um, it you can't see past chats in Zoom. So, um, and if anybody in our viewing audience wants to play, you can. 
Just remember, it's it's for beginners. I can put in a rating cap, I, but um, Keith does not have a static rating yet, so Keith wouldn't be able to play. Yeah, you guys are probably too high. <laughs> and Rex just says he gave up on Blitz. Good for you. Um, we do this one Blitz because we're trying to get more games in. So Sky Knight, you could definitely join. Love to have you in there, Sky Knight. You're one of my students. Let's see who else we have out there. Chess Wizard is out there, but he's playing. Yep, so right now Sky Knight would be the only one I see online that I'd like to get in there. Baxterus should be able to play. Let's see if he wants to play. There, we've sent him the invite. Yeah, but you're still one of my students, so it's okay. Your rating's a little higher, but it's okay. It'd be good for you. All right, guys, let me change the start time because I just want to get through the minor piece, the finish off minor pieces to get to the next item. So let me edit this one to start in, where's my start time? Oh, that's not showing on there, huh? That's funny. Just, just 13 minutes. Oh, there it is up here. Yes, but I want to make it start sooner. So right now it is 8.16, I'll make it for 8.20. Oops, that's not gonna work. All right, 8.20, we'll start. Three minutes, 10 minutes earlier than it had. Good. Two minutes and 43 seconds. You guys can play. Yeah, it's around 1600 uh, blitz, and he's not static in blitz. You could trade play, Chris. That'll give him four. Whoa, Murph, where'd you go? I was trying to see if the time changed. It says that 12 minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. It still does. yeah, but it's actually it two. Try refreshing your your browser instead of dropping in and out. Yeah, yeah there's a there's the a little, little yeah there's a little circle up in the top left of your browser. Okay, oh, there you go. Okay, it worked. Yep. Good, 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 good. Yeah, these are just training games. They're casual. No worries. I did ask Chris to play so you had four. He's a little higher rated, but this is good practice. And you know, one of the reasons people get high rated is because they're playing openings they know. Well, this won't be an opening he knows. Right, because it's, it's not, so. I mean, I could play too, but I'd rather watch and just teach. But otherwise I could too. All right, Janet, uh, thanks for letting me know. And uh, you probably won't be able to see it either, Janet, but right now we're going to work on bishops versus knights. And, I, oh, Irv, you need to join uh, the tournament. There you go, my brother. Try to sign up. you got one minute before we start. If you get in there, then Chris will probably drop out, so you guys will be more closely rated. What are you talking about, uh, Sky Knight? You're only thirteen seventy-five. What are you? Why are you saying you're too high? How are you too high? You're thirteen seventy-five. The limit is sixteen hundred. Did you join, Irv? I don't see you. I'm on. I don't see you. Just join the, the Zoom call. Oh, okay. Well, he's got a tournament. Oh, okay. There you go. And Click that link and to... join up. Chris, if you want to pause out, um, it should be okay. Uh, he should get in there in time to play. Yep, if you want to pause out, 
Chris, real quick, see if it keeps you from getting a game. Uh, you're awesome. All right, guys, um, we are doing minor peace play. Thanks, Chris. If we get a fifth, you could please join back, and we'll get that way. Every there won't be anybody waiting. All right, guys. So what we're learning here is we're going to look at how bishops work different than knights, and they're going to practice bishops versus knights. This gives them an opportunity to play with different pieces and see how different pieces work. And so here's exactly what we, we talked about. This bishop is now trapped from this side. And so it's limited in scope. Doesn't mean it can't get over there later if things get traded eat off. Your, eat your goal. But you have to okay. But you have to understand that this locks the bishop out, right? So it, it creates a different dynamic. Now, also, the power is to have both of these. So that trade actually hurts um, white a little bit because now he only has one bishop. And black can put his pawns on white to limit what this bishop's scope. Or, or you could do the opposite and put them all on black, giving the bishop a lot of room, but no, nothing to attack. So that's the dynamics we should see in that game. This one, no trades have been done yet. So let's go back to this one. So with this this bishop being here, um, again, I think black can start by harassing the bishop and keeping the bishop out of play. So that's an option. And it still takes thought, right? This is still a thinking game. You have to figure out how you want to play it. Notice that the bishop is keeping the king out of here and then the knight just took away another square. So don't like the knight here you know i think i would have done this and maybe even um i don't know I, i'd want to be able to pressure here i wouldn't have minded the double pawns actually either just because i could push and get rid of them uh, but that's me it is better to have no double pawns but right now it's it's very static kings have to play but now we see the dynamic of one knight against one bishop, and we'll see who has the better of it. All right, in this game, we still have all the pieces. And we can create a, a pawn break and get some dynamics and open lines. But look at this too, same idea, right? This bishop is only stuck here now. So if black can get his pieces activated, it'll be interesting. I hope this is educational for them and educational for us watching them play with chess, bishops, and knights. Yeah, we've been doing this ratchet for the last few classes. I think you missed the last few Wednesday classes. So the class before this one, we had... Um, two bishops and two knights versus two bishops and two knights. We did a bishop and a knight versus a bishop and a knight. And we had one bishop versus one bishop and one knight versus one knight. So we tried different combinations. And the idea is to get comfortable with understanding how the minor pieces interact with pawns and kings. I like it. Our, our students are talking to themselves. I'm going to mute you, Keith, just so that your opponents don't know what you're saying. Otherwise, he might be giving his opponents some tips on what he's planning. <laughs> Who's playing that? Hey, Chess Wizard, and you gave a shout out to uh, Marichess. Is she on stream or are you just because you were playing her one-on-one -on -one games? I know she were playing her. Would you just like giving her a shout out whenever you can? Oh, really? In just a regular tournament and you got paired? Wow, that's funny. Got paired with your teacher. Was it a big tournament? 
That must have been funny getting, uh, did she say hi? And <laughs> I think she was pretty confident she would beat you, huh? Well, I hope so, Ratchet. You do need sleep. Oh, we have five? Thank you, Chris. Look at you on the spot. Oh, well, that's because Chess, Chess Wizard joined too. Chess Wizard shouldn't have been in there, but it turns out really well you two can play each other. That works out really, really well. So that's excellent. So much. look at this, guys. So much different than the other two games where they started off with center pawns and went, went for it all. These guys are like fianchettoing and not occupying the center, trying to be more cautious and wait and see what they can do, what might happen. Pretty interesting if you ask me. This could have been a nice move in case could have taken back, so this doesn't happen. Not that it's horrible. Remember, I, I said I would even probably go with that if that was the two choices. So again, now look, this, this is like the worst square possible for this piece. Worst square possible. And he's right now he has no room to go anywhere, right? That's the worst possible square for that piece. But, you know, he can move and then get him out. But at the moment, this is like the worst possible square. So I like that, hopefully. And then you get this one activated. I mean, you want to get this hitting that, don't you? That's free candy and went too far. Right? Why come all the way here where all you have is here versus here and then you'd have all of these. See, now where do you go? If you were here, could have went here and won candy. What is he going to do? This? Come on. Why so slow? Why? I don't understand. We're going to have to ask him. We're going to have to... Oh, wait. You're not supposed to be listening. I, listen. I didn't know you were talking about me, but I figured it out when I was like, oh, no, that's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious why you went there. I, I didn't know what you were doing. I, I, because I can't see straight. But you have glasses on. Yeah, I know. I need All right. Maybe I need to take them off. So this is just a trade of pawns. And notice that they're on black, so white has no targets. While this guy's going to be able to change color and, and possibly attack pawns. Now, this guy could try to limit his scope. And this is how the game is going to go. This will never take here as long as he, he's there. Can never take it because there's no black bishop to attack here. This could get pushed eventually. Um, so yeah, this actually wins a pawn. So that's this is a definite error because from here you attack this one. And what's funny about the knight is if you move this one, then you get to take that one. So this is actually bad. It does attack the bishop, granted, but the bishop runs away and then this pawn is hanging. And when the bishop runs away, he can attack your knight and now what? All right? I guess you can come in and attack the bishop so if he takes. Uh, but, yeah, you found a way to attack it and not even be on. You can't even attack the bishop back. So now you're threatening to lose this pawn. Why? Why did we give up that pawn? There's no reason. So we could still go here and win this pawn or that one. But it was just, why, why are we giving away that pawn? All right. Let's see how these two are doing. These are the higher rated ones. And like I said, I think this, anyone, you know, even if they're higher rated, all of my students could play against them because this is something they haven't done before, most likely. Like missing, look at this miss. Just clear miss, but you trade that one. So do you want to open it up and give them that one for this one? Well, yeah, I probably would only because I have tempo. This doesn't stop any of that from happening. And in fact, now, well, the dub, you don't have to double. Don't have to double. Very interesting. Let's see how they carried on. Looking good, guys. Looking good. All right. Back to this game that had some, oh, and they're low on time already. And take with tempo, get a check. 
can check again, but the king just moves to take here. That one is on the wrong color, so if you go here, you will get there. And then you'll get going. So you could take here first. Chances are he won't take with the king. Well, this way it doesn't matter, right? Still pretty much have to take. Don't really have much of a choice. And when he takes back, he's going to get both of these under attack. But now you can attack. And if you get rid of these, oh, eh, errors, errors, errors. This is more important. This is just so much more important. Should have just went for that right away. Should have left that back. Went for this right away. Take, take, get out of the way. You have this to stop the pawn from queening, hopefully. And then you push and queen. So he's finding it, but he's a little late. And he's got 38 seconds. So kind of exciting. 16 and 27 seconds here. Threatening a fork. No, he just has... Oh, he could have just taken the pawn, but he's pre-moved it. Could have just taken the pawn, but he pre-moved it. And the pawn's going to push again. This is not good. We're not doing it right. You can come here or here, but you can actually ignore him. Yes, take and then push again, and you're going to queen. Still take. He takes, you push, the knight can't stop him. I learned this one from um, Sword of the Word, or Why Not Chess. Yeah, Tony taught me this one, that rook pawns are hard for knights to stop. Good job, guys. Whoa, we got queens made in this game. All right, see, this is what I love. This is this gets to an end game, and this is why we start with the end game. Look at how we played this one out. All right, so now we're down to a king and pawn end game. Pretty straightforward, and he gave away this pawn. Okay, I right, first of all, you got to go here, but instead you gave away the pawn. Black should have just taken and taken and push this pawn. Black should win this easy, but he went all the way after this pawn. I don't know. You see how well they know in games, guys. My goodness. Ah, uh, L. Uh, Noah ended up getting ahead in this game somehow, and decided to take a rook instead of a queen. It looks like very interesting. Whoa, game must have ended. But I want to see how it got there because White missed opportunities, and this is just horrible. Wow, guys, that's just horrible. He had this nice square. Why not there? I'm, I'm confused. Why not there? I mean, this this works. This attacks. This attacks squares, protects. Well placed. Can't get kicked out. But instead, the king blocked him in. So, don't understand how that why that happened. That's just a bad choice, big time. And then white missed an opportunity right here. Don't know why he went all the way back here. Could have went here. Here, next move. Would have won that pawn. And, oh, wow, and he never got, he didn't get over there until, yeah, way late. Too bad. And what I was talking about was even here. So he takes here, yes. And White could have just said, you know, I'm going to go here. Yeah, I'll show you. White could have said, well, I'm going to go after him. He could have protected. That probably would have been the best move to protect, to tell you the truth. Uh, but let's say if he didn't protect and he took, then you take. And then I don't know where you want to go because we're going to take off more stuff. And this can hold for a while. And you still have a pass pawn to push. But, of course, he didn't have to do that. But then again, if he doesn't do that, uh, right? Bishops again. If he doesn't do that and he does this, well, then you can just come back, right? 
and protect and wait. Anyway, all right, anyway, fun game. All right, this one ended with uh, black checkmating white, and we have more games. All right, Keith and Herb, and now Chess Wizard is pausing out. Why are you pausing? Yeah, it's okay. You might as well play now because uh, Chris is in, and now we have an odd number, so you're making somebody sit out. So play so that um, they get to play. Noah, will, Noah can play you. Don't worry about it. Noah, Noah can play you. No, nope, I just need Chess Wizard to join back because you're already in a game. So Chess Wizard should join back in. All right, Murph and PCL. Nice job, Murph. Being very active, I like it. And wow, we got traded off. When? How did you guys trade off all your... Ah, oh, doubled up everything. Not bad, Murph. Not bad at all. I actually like what Murph did. You have three pawn islands, double pawns over here. You need to lock up this side, which um, Chris actually helped him. And now he just moved. He has to get his king over here. Has to get his king over here. Why am I doing that? The game is going to be decided over here, so Murph has to get his king over there. He can ignore this whole side. This pawn is going nowhere. He can at the right time just do that. These are all locked. Even if he comes in here, you take the opposition. If he goes here, you take the opposition. Now you don't even have to take opposition, but you can, yes, very good. He could take the opposition, but you have choices. You could do this to win the pawn. You could do this to chase the king. All right, now you got to start. You have to make a pass pawn over here. That's that's the game. The game is to try to make a pass pawn. So I'm not crazy about that choice. Maybe maybe this would have been better. Maybe. Um, but hey, this does lock it down. This is going to be very. I don't see how black could ever break in. Nope, don't like that at all. I don't know what that does. I'm totally confused about that move. Totally confused by that move. Unless he's playing for a draw, I'm totally confused. Now, he will eventually... Well, no, he doesn't because the king could just... Well, the king can't go back and forth. If he locks everything up, so if he locks everything up over here, and this gets locked, and then you could push this pawn, eventually either this pawn has to push and be given away for free and create a pass pawn, or this king has to give way. Okay, so Murph has to make it so his king, he's got to make it so he can go last, right? He wants, he wants to make the last pawn move where the king has to give way. And the king has to back up. And once the king backs up, Murph steps in. I'm not crazy about this move, to tell you the truth. I'm a little worried. A little worried. Definitely don't know what this move was for if we end up doing this move. Hey, monkey play. Um, you're probably too high rated for this group. This is mostly 1600 and under type. And we right now have an even number, but if we get another odd number, then yeah, you could join. This is very interesting end game. Uh, they're they're sixteen hundreds. It's a very much a beginner's um, class. In fact, it's it is a beginner's class. It's a class on how to play chess, and we are starting with the end game in mind. So you might be a little too high rated for them. So now Murph can block that up. Oh, okay. I, I like the pawn better and force that king to move again. And right now he, he does go win a pawn though. Will he see it? And see, this is where I told you the ratings don't matter. Murph is 1057, playing in 1809. There's 800 points almost between them. 800 points almost between them. But, oh, okay, but Chris is super tired. That helps a lot. <laughs> the other thing that helps is that Murph should know his end games. Now, he should have went after that pawn. Don't know why he took that pawn. But he should still be able to win. So he can push. If he takes, you take. And that's the only place he can go. He gets the magic position, and Murph should know how to win this. He should know that's the magic position. He does. 
He's got to go one side or the other. Now he's got to be careful. But there is no stalemate because there is a pawn. So he could just check and check some more. And look at that. Murph should be at someone 800 points higher than him because it's chess endgame. It's endgame, guys. And I'll bet Chris is... He's at 1809. A lot, he probably does not play many endgames. He probably wins a lot of his games in the opening and in the middle game. And that's why I love teaching endgames uh, because they all learn this way. All right, let's go check out the Noah and Chess Wizard game. All right, so we're trying to get both bishops doing a lot of work. I like that. I like making trying to make the bishops active. And this is threatening to take away a square from the bishop. Didn't go here. That would have actually trapped the bishop if he had stayed here and moved something else. But I thought he would just do this to try to keep that from happening. But he didn't. And black chose not to push. And so, of course, white does. And now, what kind of position are we getting, guys? This is a closed position, right? This is a closed position. Yes, four hours of sleep, Chris. Yes, that'll hurt you too. I think it's great, though, that you lost. Not for you, but great for Murph, who needs more confidence in being able to beat stronger players. I keep telling him he shouldn't play scared. He should play like he can beat anybody, and I think he can. All right, so these guys are playing a very interesting uh, game. That pawn can't get there with this guy, so now we have two pass pawns to push. No, what do we do with pass pawns, guys? Come on, chess wizard. Push we push them. Pass pawns want to be pushed, but instead of pushing the pawn, he moves his bishop to try to stop this pawn. So he went from he went from being able to play an offensive line, right? He could have just started pushing. This king would have had to try to come over. Can't get here. Can't get here because the pawn would have been there. He would have been able to push again. That king would have to take this route, in which case this pawn pushes. This bishop would have come to life. So now he's finally pushing the pawn, but it's kind of late. That is sweet. That is sweet. That is just a fork. So there you go. His opponent fell for a tactical error, right? Tactical trap, but he didn't have to, right? This is what, see what I'm saying? He should have pushed the pawn much earlier, but he fell for this tra tactical trap. Now, can you take though? <gasps> yes, because this would get back in here in time. So first he threatens, then he's going to push. Oh, he takes that, okay, he takes that pawn, threatening to take that pawn. And the idea is this pawn is still dangerous. Now you have two passers, and again, pass pawns want to be pushed. Should have pushed, instead he didn't push. You can go after, the, oh, I would have went after that pawn. I would have went after that pawn. See, now that pawn's going to... Oh my gosh, he didn't pay attention. Queen, queen. Oh my goodness. Dueling queens, guys. You definitely don't want to trade queens because the king wins. The king, a Z, should win if you do that. So that's going to be an interesting game that shouldn't have been that interesting. K-Love and Irv, how you two doing? Uh, Keith gave away free candy, guys. Oh, he gave away a lot of free candy. He's in big trouble. Uh, big trouble. And Irv has a lot of time. Oh, my goodness. For Irv, that's a lot of time. For anybody, that's a lot of time in this game. Now, if that queen gets close enough that when they trade, the king is over here, he's in good shape. Hey, thanks a lot for the raid, Seven. How are you? You should, Seven, you should join. This would definitely fit for you. Hey, thank you for the follow. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that, four bunnies. Yes, I know who you are. You're one of Seven's daughters. Thanks for the follow. Oh, yeah, seven would be better. Seven, you should join. Um, do I have? Yeah, I still have it in here. Uh, there's only four minutes left, though. 
Seven, you should definitely stay around for the lesson. And you guys, you and your daughter should play in the next one. This one they're still trying to figure out, guys. Queens against queens. Queens plus pawn against queen plus pawn. And this queen hasn't had a chance to move yet because white keeps checking. Oh, finally. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. And we got a draw. This should definitely be a draw. Yep, and you can even force a draw by going here. And they draw. All right, guys, that should be it. Um, maybe they'll get you another game. If it does, we'll watch it. Otherwise, we'll get back to the lesson. <laughs> if you need someone to throw something, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys, uh, we didn't get a shot off for seven. I'll take care of that. Yes, I know. I know. Okay. Yes, I, I said that when she followed. I do recognize her name. No, unless it's one of these games. I'm teaching a lesson tonight, Sky Knight. So I'm not going over random games. Yeah, you'll need it for that for the candidates tournament. All right, guys, I believe it it might not pair anybody, which will be fine. And we can get back to the next phase of the lesson. If it pair, I'm waiting. It's got less than three minutes. I'm going to assume it won't because the games are five minutes. Yeah. I'm going to pause anyhow. And just go to the there you go. Good. Pause. That'll help me out. All right. So you guys, we did do the um, nights. We did this one and we did this one. And now uh, we we did this one last week. Let me edit it so we can mark it. So I'll remember that it's done. I remember doing that one last week. All right. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I'm not. We're not going to play this game out or anything. All right. Um, I do want you to know it though. So I'm going to turn on the computer, and we're going to let the computer just run through it because I just want you to see what how to do a mate with two pieces, uh, two bishops, okay? Now the concept I will tell you is to get the king into a corner, any corner. Two bishops, you need to get the king into the corner, you need to force him into the corner, and you will need your king. You need all three pieces, you don't just try to checkmate with just the bishops. All right, so we should get, uh, let's see, go, go. No, I don't wanna play against the computer. Uh, best move arrows. We're just seeing what the computer says to do. So the king moves up and look what it happens. So now look what just happened. The king can't go across that marginal line, right? Then go here and say check and let the king pop over. We're trying to force the king into a corner. And yes, this is a forced mate. I don't know how many moves. How would I know how many moves besides the fact it says it on the computer? Yes. Yes. The computer tells me it's mating 13 right now. Yes. All right. So, um, and then the king came into the game, and I'm just showing you the computer. And by the way, while you guys probably know I don't like you using computers, I think it's a crutch. I think you need to analyze on your own. Yes, I know, Chris. Um, that you should analyze on your own. I will tell you the one place that I think computers are great for is learning and studying end games, especially checkmate patterns, right? Because the computer is actually going to give black the best moves to try to survive, and it's going to give white the best moves to checkmate. So you notice the king is doing everything he can not to get into a corner. He tried to get up towards the middle of the board, and that's the same in any end game. If you can get your king to the middle of the board when you're down to the king versus you have the best chance to survive the longest amount of time. Um, yes, it does um, focus on making it so that black has to move. It's not really, I don't think it, I don't think it focuses on Zugzwang as much. Zugzwang is where you've got to move and you don't want to. 
Uh, this one, it it's more of a restraint. It's watch, I'm going to take away all the squares from the king. By the way, can you see what would happen if he went this way? Remember, you don't want to go to the corner, so why doesn't the king go this way, guys? The computer's saying the best move is go in the corner, but why would he not go here? Because bishop will put him in check. And? Force him back to that original square. Would it be check? Yeah, you would force him back to the original square, and then the other bishop can come in. All right, so check, and then he would have to move over, and then check again, and then he'd have to move over, and then check mate, right? That's correct. All right, good. So if he goes this way, it's quicker. But it's three-move mate anyway, it says. So what does he do? He takes away the square anyway. Patience, right? Don't We don't check. A lot of us would probably say, oh, I'm going to go say check. No. We're going to take away that square first. Then what do you think we do now? We say check, taking away that square. He only has one legal move, right? And then we say mate. All right? Look good? Understood? All right, same thing with the knight and the bishop. We want to get the king into a corner, but the difference is we need to get the king into a corner with the same color as our bishop. So we have a dark square bishop. We need to force the king into a dark corner. The king is going to do everything he can to stay out of the dark corners. So right now we're taking away all of these squares, if you look, right? So the only square the king can go to is one of these two. And so he does, but Right, he can't notice we kept him from going towards the light corner. So now we just all this is is about restraint and taking away squares. Now we get a check, he has to come back, and we could slide over. Knight now takes away this square. King still takes away these squares. Bishop is not even playing at the moment because he did his job. Again, we could go here. Now the king has these three squares. Now again, you might say, well, what happens if he goes here, right? I mean, we sh why not? That looks like a good move, right? But we get pushed back anyway. Okay, so let's go with um, what the computer said was the best move. Oh. Computer says go into the corner voluntarily for the moment, come back. And the computer's just figuring out how you live more moves. <laughs> and that was just a, that was the delay move. I don't know why he couldn't move here. I think that would do the same delay. But the computer liked him all the way over here instead of here. I don't know. Um, but we'll find out. So we get a check. He has to go back. We get a check. And it's mate. And again, it would have been mate from here. It would have been mate from here. Would have been mate from here. But, yeah. So he needs to just so you throw have to away. Go for that delay to avoid a stalemate. Right. We need to stall a move. But I'm say what I'm saying is that move, he could have went here. Right? And watch the same thing is obviously going to happen. But for some reason, the computer picked that square as a better square than here and here. And that's, I mean, here and here. It, it's like, why is this square better than this one and this one? I have no idea. All right, guys. All right, last one. And by the way, you can look these up online. You can look them up on YouTube. You can even look at them if you go to learn, practice. Knight and bishop mate. Challenging checkmates. I believe this one might have the two bishops. Yep, two bishop mate. And you could practice with the computer and it'll give you hints and everything. 13 moves from this position for white to mate. The knight and bishop mate, same thing. This one is 10 moves from here. And it will give you hints. It'll give you the information. It's all inside of learn. Now let me show full screen for you guys just for a second. So you can learn about all these mates right here, guys. All right, so these are the tricky ones we didn't bother with yet. Here's a different way to do the knight and bishop mate. Um, and they're both the same color bishop, so it wasn't that. And then they're going to do two knights versus a pawn, which I'm about to show you. But you also have queen versus knight, because a lot of times, right, you got a knight versus a queen. Do you know how to mate? 
Do you know how to stop mate if you can, right? Because you're going to try to live as long as you can. Queen versus rook. Again, do you know how to force mate with a queen versus rook? And then the queen versus bishop. So we'll get to these. We'll probably spend some time on these after we finish the major pieces because then it'll be major versus minor. All right, so how does, how does um, white win this one? It's very complicated. And this one, again, do I want you to have to memorize it? No. Uh, it helps when you go look at the learn in Lee Chess. It will give you the concept of what you're doing. Right? It'll give you the concept of what you're doing. So that king can only go backwards right now, but right, it'll give you the concept of what you can do on how you would do it. And you would have to try to do this over the board. Even if you remembered, unless you memorized the technique, it's, it's murder. And even grandmasters, they all don't have this memorized. Because you know how often it happens that you have a bit two knights against a king and a pawn? Mm, very rare very rare so we don't bother with it right and just look at this it's not even giving you it's not even giving you it just says white is winning it's not giving you the force mate it's not even giving you a force mate and there should be and so again if we go back to here and we go to the two knights versus a pawn now it might depend on which pawn but i thought i gave yeah this is a knight pawn so that should have been forced and this says here you have a mate in 15. There wasn't one in that setup? Why is that? This is mate in 15, but why is there no mate in this setup? Someone's telling me there's no mate in this setup. Oh, it has to... Well, how is the G pawn different than the B pawn? All right, we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to learn together, guys. Two knights can't force checkmate by themselves, but if the enemy has a pawn, we can avoid stalemate and force mate. Mate and 15 have played correctly. I see no reason why it should be a difference with the G pawn and the B pawn. And my knights are differently placed, but they should still be able to force mate. If, if you could tell me that this is the only way that you could force mate if you're like this at the time, then that's ridiculous because how often is that exact position going to happen? No, it's, you should be able to force mate with two knights if black has a pawn, period. And the fact that pawn hasn't moved yet means you should definitely have enough time. But the computer wasn't even fighting it. So, Marty? Yes, sir. Um, the thing I'm taking away from the conversation, uh, besides it being very difficult, is what I heard you say that I didn't realize before was you can't force black still has or the opponent still has a pawn on the hip. Correct, because otherwise you have stalemate. So if I'm white in this scenario Don't take the I pawn. Don't take the pawn if I Ever. Play with you. Yeah, never take the pawn, otherwise you will get you it the best you could do is stalemate. Yeah, because I saw I saw the yeah. other um <clears throat> when you were playing it through before, there were a couple of opportunities for the knight to take the pawn, but the knight yeah. never did. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you had mentioned that. Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. So you brought that up. I saw that too. So so Chris says this position doesn't work to force mate. Um, because I I hear you. It is that the knights are too far away, um, and you give black too much time with the pawn to reroute the knights to where they are supposed to be. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So I'll look at it. Obviously, the computer doesn't see a mate in this position. So obviously, you guys should be right. I just think it's sad. I think it's very sad because how do I teach a student that, hey, you can mate with two knights if they have a pawn, but only if those two knights are also, right? You, you guys with me on that? I mean, I think there's a, a, a an essential problem with what we're t talking about, if that's true. So let me go to board editor. Let's clear the board, put a king on put two knights on and you know I mean the idea would be and I don't think it should matter where the pawn is I'm sorry it doesn't say that you know it should be that you'd be able to say okay if I have two knights and you have a pawn I can force mate and if the answer is yes but only if 
that's really going to be annoying uh, to me. So let's turn on, and yeah, this is not saying a mate in any amount of moves. And Chris says, if you're in this situation, just agree to a draw. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> and I would agree totally. Now, if I'm playing an IM or a GM, and, and Can I, ask a question? I, might, I might say no, because the best they're going to do is draw anyway. I'm going to try. Sure. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it, is it possible that the mate is not like within 15 or 20 moves, and that's why it's not showing it? No, I don't think it would matter if it was 20 moves um, because the computer can see that. It's simple enough that the computer can see it. Okay. Um, yeah, if we go all the way to this position and let it do its thing, it's still not saying there's a mate. So, Marty, what was, just show us again one more time, what was the position where you could make a mate? Um, that would be this one, for sure. In fact, they teach. This is what, if you go to learn... Peace checkmates two, this is what they show you. Yep. This is, I'm sorry, yes. Right here would be, this one you could get a mate in 15. Wow. But yeah, so, so I'm a totally agreed with you guys, all right? Yeah, you're teaching me. I use the table base. I don't know where the table base is, uh, Chess Wizard. So basically though, oh, uh, click on the table base where do you see table base where do you see a table base I see uh, play with the computer and I see opening explore oh opening explore and table base okay so it says winning I don't know if that's useful to you guys it says winning and then drawn so it says these moves are winning and then these moves are draw. Well, yeah, knight takes will definitely be draw, right? All right, it says winning. On the DTM, is moves to mate. Oh, my gosh. Okay, guys. Okay, let me do full screen because you guys, I'm sharing my... Oh, I already have it on full screen. Okay, so let me move this over a little bit. There you go. So my viewers at uh, in Zoom can see it too. Right here, it says, if you click on the Explorer and the table base, it's also the Explorer. What does DTZ stands for? It's how many moves to avoid the 50 move rule. Okay. With rounding based on number of half moves until next capture a pawn move. 20, 35 moves. It says it would take you 64 moves to mate with this so there's, move. There's the answer. It's below. You can mate, but it's below. It's after the 50 moves, so you get a draw before you get the mate. No, no, because the pawn would move. I think the pawn would move, because it says, well, let's see, it says, with rounding based on number of half moves until next capture or pawn move is 35. Right, so I think it's saying you still can get a mate in 64. This one gets you a mate in 80. This one will get you a mate in 82. And yeah, the problem with that one is these other ones, it says um, the, the half moves, it would be 53. So these would not work, but this very first one says you could do it in 35. So, okay guys, I've got a headache thinking about it. You've sold me. I'm not gonna bother teaching Mike. I was, gonna, I was just gonna show you guys the way it look, how it looks. I say take the pawn and take the draw. Take the pawn immediately and say it's a draw. And be happy. And you know what? I said if I'm playing a GM or an IM, I might want to play it out because, you know, I have the only chance to win. But I'd be happy with a draw against an IM or a GM. So I'm going to take the draw anyway. You guys have totally convinced me. You sold me. All right, guys. So let's move on. We've already done this one, too. We just did that one. All right. So I want to move you on to major pieces. We're going to jump a little bit further because we could do rooks. We could do rooks against rooks, right? Because rooks need to talk to each other. You do not need to always castle to make rooks talk to each other. All right? Now the rooks are talking to each other. And then there's a thing called stacking. And what we want to do with stacking, and I'll just build something here for you. I'm just going to build it even though it doesn't make any sense. We call this stacking. 
where the rooks are now in a vertical line. And so you could do, let's say you did things like this, you can do this, right? And the idea is, well, while you can take, the idea would be that you, um, if you ever got rid of this pawn, you have two against one, you would take, white would take back, but black gets the last take. So rooks are very powerful when they talk to each other and stack, okay? So we wanna stack rooks, but I think more useful for you guys will be the talk about queens. Now we could just play queens against queens, but although this is for very much a beginner, I think you guys would get the idea and you'd be running around and you just saw a queen versus queen end game. So I think would be more educational is this one. And this is where I told you that the two rooks are supposed to be stronger than the queen. Now the queen is gonna have an advantage because that queen is gonna be able to attack multiple um, pieces at the same time, right here and here. Uh, it can look for forks here and here, where the rooks are gonna to have to one get connected before they're gonna be strong, and then they're gonna need open lines. But that said, the queen has to move pawns to get open lines, you can restrict the queen to a degree, and your rooks are supposed to be equal or better than the queen. All right, remember, rooks go on straight lines, and rooks need open files. You need to, and there's a thing uh, I should explain. It's a thing called a rook lift. So let's say we go here to attack the pawn. That rook can actually come up here and then come across. So if you were to trade off a pawn or two and you had a rook here, you could do a rook lift to get that rook to team up. You don't have to go behind it, right? So this is called the rook lift where you move a pawn, and it doesn't have to be this pawn. Um, black and castle, remember. Now the rooks are connected. And you could do a rook lift here. You could do a rook lift here. You can move over here and do a rook lift. So rook lift is a, uh, a technique where you could get your rook ahead of your pawns, all right? Yes, I agree. I agree. Even if we're against Magnus Carlsen, it's better to use your time playing and learning than memorizing that one. Yes. Okay. I get you. I get you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we've proven. Chad is still saying that, you know, basically we've proven that two nights isn't worth the time. All right, guys. So, let's take this position. I'm going to give you another chance to play against each other. And while, if you notice, while you play each other, I'm going over mistakes you make and how you could do better, right? I talked about Irv's move. He went from here all the way back to here, giving his bishop only one square. Well, if he had went just one square back, he would have had all of these squares to use. So remember, not to don't restrict your own pieces, guys. Don't help your opponent by restricting your own pieces. That's... Probably we the, want to do rooks today or go over what we did with the other pieces. I we, we didn't see what you showed everybody. Why not? Wasn't I sharing my screen? Well, we were playing. Oh. We were oh, oh you're saying. In the game, I got a queen. You told me I did something wrong. I'm curious what it is because I got a queen. Fair enough. Murphy, just gotta, you got to watch the replay, man. That's what we <laughs> That, well, that's a good idea too, right? Instead of yeah. going backwards, you, you could just watch the replay because I do want to give you a chance to experience. So this game you won. Let's just talk. I'll go over this game pretty quickly with you guys. So here I said you did a good job because you traded off everything. You ended up with your opponent with double pawns, double pawns, and three pawn islands. Now this is old news to you guys. We've we played pawns before. We've played pawns since day one. So you know three pawn islands is worse than two pawn islands. You know that double pawns are weak. You know that an isolated pawn is weak. So Murph, you did an outstanding job of getting to an endgame. I love that you didn't take with the pawn here because that will create three pawn islands. That and I wanted opposition. Yeah, opposition is great. Now he made you give it up and this is fine. And here is where I said, okay, so I'm looking at this position Black can't get in. Black can't get in right now. Um, never are you going. Black can never get in over here. The best black can do is this, and you could just take and run a pawn, right? Right. So you do have to be careful. You might want this pawn here. Why do I say you want that pawn there? Is because let's say black were to push here and you were to take, 
Now he could push here and you could take, but now he puts is this one. And of course I'm assuming like this king is away. So that pawn could get through. But if you just prep that by at some time doing that, if he ever goes here, you don't care, you just take. Because if he pushes, you just take this way. So that was just one technique that you'd want to go here so that if he did this, you could actually take and not have to worry about this pawn ever becoming free. So that was just one thought. But this was great. Now this was a bit iffy um, because you could have just slid over. And why can you just slide over? The king can't get in and your king would keep this square. He could push the pawn, but then he has to protect the pawn eventually. So that, and I don't know, I didn't think it all the way through, but um, I thought this could be a move for you. But I do, I did like this one because it tax the king. And if you watch, we're gonna get to a point, this move I did not like. I don't have a clue what that move was. I have no clue what that move was. I, I, I'm totally flummoxed. So right now you should look and say, he has one pawn move, two pawn moves. Remember if you push here, this pawn move doesn't matter. Right. All right, so he has one, two, three, potentially four, maybe five if I don't do anything. I have one, two, or one, two, or one, two, three. I can get a fourth if I need it, right? So the idea is I want to move the, I want to be the last person to be able to move a pawn so that king has to move, because right now, where can that king go? That king can only go backwards. And so once all the pawns are locked in and that king moves backwards, you get to move up. And so the idea is that you should be able to move up. Again, you need him to get into Zugzwang. Unfortunately, he could go here right now. So you still need another pawn move in your pocket, right? So you wouldn't use, let's say you have a pawn move to store in your pocket, you wanna save it. Um, so that you could then get the opposition again, and then you're in, right? You're going to get into his backfield, and you'll start eating his pawns. But anyway, the way the game went was fine. I, I just didn't understand that move. I understood this move with the idea of doing this move, and that way when he takes, and you could try. But remember, he has double pawns, so we right, don't... At some point, you were talking about getting a passed pawn. I wasn't sure how you're getting that. Okay, let, let's see. Let's see where you could... Oh, it's right here. Okay, this was where I thought you made a mistake. What's the best move for white? I thought you made a mistake. Well, you had said take the C pawn. Yeah, so you were listening. So, um, and that gives you opposition. Right? And this pawn is going to fall. If he pushes it, you could just take it. And if he doesn't push it, he can't protect it. But you took this pawn which now means he can protect this one. And then you just made it harder on yourself. That's all. I mean, you it works because you have the magic position. I also said that you know this, you know you should get the magic position, you should win. Um, by the way, here, it would be great if he had a move to throw away because this would be stalemate. But he doesn't have a move to give away because look, you did it, yay! Because otherwise he could throw away, he could throw away, and then he could try to queen in time. And even though you might get a queen, if he gets a queen, yeah, it could be up in the air. But you can't move this pawn without him having a pawn move, because it would be stalemate. Ooh. Right? Okay, yeah. But fortunately for you, it's, it's his move. So if you hadn't done that, right, let's say, uh, I don't, I want to throw away a move. And, da, 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 da. and so now... Um, it's your move, right? If you go here, it's stalemate. And if you go here, he gets to run, and he's going to win. So that would have given you stalemate. That... Black still had the pawn move. Say again? Oh, it wouldn't be stalemate. True, true, true. He'd, have to, he'd be forced to move the pawn. Yeah, he would be forced to move the pawn. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. So, yeah. Yep, so this is a win though, easy. And I don't remember, if, I, don't, I don't, yeah, I don't remember. It was in this game then, talking about you made a mistake getting a queen. It was earlier, it was earlier. The, the, the pawn that I moved, the B pawn, you asked me why I did, or the C pawn. Yeah, I didn't why? know, I didn't know what went on with that pawn move. Oh, 
Although I was looking for a move at that point. Oh, okay. What, what should I have done? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah like, I, like I said, back here, I was thinking that you could be trying to make a pass pawn. So you ended up doing it. You did this, this, and then this. And I just would have went for it right away. That was just my thought. Now, he could do that. Right? He could do that. And then you could say, that's nice, and you could go here. Because now you could still push. He takes, you take, he takes, you take, and your king is still going to try to go eat him. Because he could try to come over here. You know, I don't know. And you could always still go here. Right? You could always still go here. I still like this move as early as possible, but then he gets here, you could get here, he could get here, and yep, he's still going to be the last one to move, but I want to be here to get in. Yeah, no, it looks like the move you made was fine. Let's see what the computer says. Let's just see if the computer, okay, computer likes I this. Saved the H, I saved the H pawn for a move in case I needed one. Oh, look at this. He's not, <laughs> the computer's playing for a draw. Computer's playing it out as a draw, which it can be a draw. I mean, you think about it, it's equal pawns. Uh, the king is over here by the double pawns. It's three against three. So, yeah, very hard for anybody to make advances into the position. So, yeah, throwaway moves are great. Um, but, yeah, I, I just thought you'd go this way to try to make a... Uh, and so there it is right there. He could just go straight back, and he does not. He does not trade off pawns. He just says, "Nope, we'll just keep playing around." Interesting. So my move isn't any better, and he says, based on your move, um, he's, he just says. So I'm going to wind up trading the A and the B pawn for one of the double pawns and the A pawn, and then I've got to take care of the second C pawn with my king to get a pass pawn. Yeah, but see, look, it says it doesn't even work. It says it's basic. I, I, it's a draw. It should have been a draw with correct play. All right, guys. All right, so can we do the other one now? or Because you guys are going to run out of time. What if you I'm ready. All right, we'll do this one to end the class, and then we'll talk about... We talked a little bit about it, but we'll go into detail, and we'll, we will review these games for the beginning of next class. But let's create the tournament so that you can actually play it. And you guys in chat, feel free to join in, um, especially those that are not like 2,200. All right, let me create this for you guys. And now Janet's here, so she gets to practice too, which is nice. And yes, it's very fast, but that's because we're only doing a half an hour. And we're going to start in two minutes. And uh, no Berserk and no Arena Streaks. Create the tournament. I'll withdraw and I will give it to everyone in viewer land out there. And I'll put it in your guys' chat window. There you go. And think about how you want to use your pieces. Remember, rooks, rooks need to talk to each other to work well. Um, queens, you know, they're going to need open lines too. And so it should be very interesting. All right, Chris, just take a look, Chris. If it's an odd number, you could jump in. I would just do it based on that. Murph beats you anyway, so, so hey, you're beatable. And these are the type of games that anyone can win. As, you know, even if you guys are 18, 19, 2000, if you haven't studied and understand these, uh, how these pieces work together, you can have problems. Right, you can have problems winning these games. It's 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 how do you get to have a certain rating? And that's what we talked about, right? That we assume that a certain rating has certain knowledge, but that's not true. I believe that you can get to certain ratings with certain knowledge and you can grow and, and do better, but there is no like, oh, if you're two thousand, you know king and pawn endgames. No, I've seen two thousands that have no clue. Say again? Oh, yes, I did. And I can send it to you directly, Janet, if need be. That's quite the quote. Janet, uh, what is it, Janet? What's Janet's name? Never mind. Janet Chess 1. 
Jan Ten, Chess one. Nine, eight, seven. There you six, go, Janet. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. You can join late, Janet. Join in there, though. All right, Janet's in. So, Chris, you could join since Chess Wizard's in and we have an odd number. So, Chris, feel, feel, feel free. And if, um, no. <laughs> yes, 2200 would be kind of high. It's still educational. I really don't mind. It, they, I'm trying they, to. Something's happening. All right. Uh, okay, okay. It might be black to move, but I'm pretty sure it's white to move. There you go. Yep, I wanted it to be white to move because white had to move to get the queen to be able to play. So it felt unfair to make a move twice. Like seeing what I'm seeing in here. Let's see. That's two games, so there'll be a third one maybe. But Murph and Keith. Keith, I'm going to probably mute you. So again, um, your musings aren't going to help uh, Murph figure out how to beat you. Oh, this is a little better for Chris. Chris says he understands this stuff better than the minor piece one. But yeah, Chris, and you're not in a game yet. Oh, there you go. Oh, and you get Janet. All right. You be nice to Janet. Janet, you have white. You're up. Chris is a tough cookie, so. Now look at this. So the queen gets deep in, and we have no open lines yet. Murph hasn't opened up anything to get his rooks to be active. I don't need to be active. He's come to me. He did come into your territory, isn't he? He's right in your face, and this would yep. be bad. But he actually has this. So will he find it? This is going to be a very interesting game, I think. All right, let's see how this one's going. We get a trade, and we get the infamous stack. The stack attack is on the move. All right, so now what? How do we carry out the rest of this mission? Right, nice long things. People are trying to figure out how to do this. So the queen came in, but a uh, little tentative. I was thinking he might come all the way. I think that's a little tentative, but hey, he has time. He only gave away a pawn. So now they're technically equal. If the queen is worth nine and the rook's worth ten, this is exactly equal at the moment. But can you figure it out? Can you play it? Can you win it? It is far from easy, guys. I think he could have thrown this in right away. Might have been better. And we'll go over these games next week, and we'll see. Think, think, think. All right, so the move did get put in. Oops. 
That's an error on Keith's part. And there you go, the power of the rooks. One is protecting the other, and we have a basic fork. And that game should not last too much longer. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is a pass pawn versus no pass pawn. This is black simplifying when he sees that he has an advantage. So now he just has to figure it out. He does have the advantage. He definitely has the advantage. He can even get into this position eventually, and the king will have to give way after he locks these guys down. Now me, I'm looking at the fact that, you know, he could get here, but that's as far. This will keep him out of here. So I'm maybe thinking here, king here. He can never get it here. Not with my king here. Oh, that actually helps him because you want to keep them. I think these want to stay. I think that's I think that's the move I'd be making here. That takes away two more squares from the king. Granted, the king could get there though. That might not be comfortable. Maybe I don't like the king there. I don't know. But this is good too. Lock these down so the king, somebody has to give way eventually. Got to be careful. Got to be very careful. Both of them have potentials. Look at this. Take, take, go here. Oh, he's doing it too. He's there. They're playing for blood, guys. Because that king probably can get back in time for this guy. Can this king get here in time? That's the count you got to figure out. That's the only count you got to figure out. You put that queen in my face real fast. <laughs> I was thinking something else. I, I, I totally lost control of this game. Hey, it's been driving me crazy. What does the T stand for? What G? T. I think he. What? I think he mistyped. I know. I know it's John Murphy, but it's uh. He is Thomas. Oh, okay. All right, Thomas. And if you want to tell everybody your home address, too, and your phone number, let them, you know, feel free. <laughs> no, sorry. Just want to make sure that you guys remember you're, like, live. That's okay. Okay, just want to make sure you know. Thank you. You're Hold welcome. Up. I'm here for you guys. All right, the two rooks win that one easily. Yeah, I never got a chance to play the two, um, two knights, though. So. Oh, you didn't? No, I got bishops, both draws. Oh, well, I guess that happens. Yeah. So Chess Wizard is trying to figure out the exact uh, combination of how this works also. So can you step inside the box? And yes, the black king can step inside the box. And the white king can't come over directly to help. So this pawn wouldn't work. This pawn would work. Marty, I don't see any any games on the um, on the Zoom right now. I'm sharing my screen. Are you looking at my screen, the shared screen? Yes. Yeah, it says um, you are viewing Martin. No, no, no. Look, look at the Zoom shared screen. You should see we're watching Chess Wizard and Irv. Uh-oh. Oh, he didn't go with the king. I thought he would move his king over to stop it. I thought for sure he was going to move his king to stop it. He has no check. This is really painful. If white had a check, he could possibly win. But he has no check. So whatever he does with his queen, it's not going to be saying check. And without saying check, that means black gets to start harassing white. And actually, he has even this square to win this pawn. So, queen to g, no, that's not possible.
And oh, how's that? Wow, guys, look at that checkmate. That's that's an unexpected checkmate. That was like, oops. That was an unexpected checkmate. Oh yes, queen to g2. He did have a checkmate. I mean a check. I missed that. He did have a check. And then this check wouldn't wouldn't work because, you know, queen take, king take, pawn take, uh, queen take, pawn take, king take. It would be it should probably be a draw. Oh, it definitely would be a draw. Yeah. Yeah, dueling. White had a check. Yeah, white had a check. I missed it. White had a check right here. I missed it. Yeah, and, and looking at that, uh, Irv only had 35 seconds. Did you know that was checkmate, or did you just happily? No, no, yeah. I was going to move there no matter what. Right, and especially if he had said check, because that was the only check he had. No. Oh, all the way out there, okay. G2 is the only check he had. A1 is in a check. Oh, oh yeah, but you can because you queen take it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's that's what I thought. Yeah, but no, I missed G2. I wasn't looking at G2. G2 would have been a check, which you don't have to take. You could still slide away because then he has no more checks. Why would have? Why wouldn't I have done the same move? Uh, because then it's a draw. Definitely. Right. Well, yeah. Queen takes queen. Pawn takes queen. King, king takes pawn. It's a draw. That's going to be a draw. But if you don't, he has no more checks. If you just go king to h7, he has no more checks. And so then it's your move. I mean, he has to move, but he has to find a square to go to. And as you just saw, if he then goes to uh, e4, you have checkmate, which we didn't know was there, but it would still be checkmate. Okay, let's see what other games we got going on. All right. Oh, a rematch of Chris and Murph and Keith and Janet. I think they're like nemesis. They play each other a lot, it seems like. Let's see how this one started out. Get, grabs a pawn early. Grabs another pawn. And we got stacked rooks coming. So Murph is trying to take advantage of his stack of his two rooks. And needs to make look, but gave away a lot of pawns. It's really hard to win the game if you give away too many pawns. Making Luft first. All right. And let me, am I on full screen again? No, nope. good. I'm on lecture where I belong. But yeah, gave it away. Look at all these pawns. Murph gave away like every pawn possible. But he can start winning some of them back. And while stack rooks are beautiful things, they are also beautiful when you can be on a horizontal line and restricting the king from getting anywhere. So now here he starts gobbling up pawns. Will Murph find it? Pig is on the seventh. Now the king has escaped the pig pen, right? The king is outside of the pig pen, but I still like pigs on the seventh for snatching back pawns. Good things might happen. All right. Let's see how this one is going with Janet and Keith. Ooh, we got a check in the middle of the board. Now, one of the things you have to be wary of, these rooks need to talk to each other because otherwise sometimes the queen can attack a rook and the king and fork or both rooks at the same time and may be able to win a rook outright. And if he wins a rook outright, black is in big trouble. So can snatch a pawn and attack the rook, which wouldn't be a bad thing. There you go. Now they're connected, so it's much harder, right? You can't, you can't snarf them. But you've got other opportunities. Will... Will White be able to realize those other opportunities? Whoa, what happened here, guys? Let's see, takes here, goes here, check, and oh yeah, we get a fork. Oh, beautiful fork. 
King comes over. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Got to be careful now. Got to be super careful. So better may have been to check from behind. Then the king has to go here. Then you could take the first one. King could go back, and you could go back, check, and take the next one. Then you could come back, and then you could start pushing these pawns. So rooks in general belong behind past pawns. If it's your enemy's pawns, you still want to be behind the pawns. If it's your pawns, you want to be behind the pawns. So notice now black doesn't really have a way to, to win this as easily. But if black were here and behind it, that king going this way, you don't care, right? You just keep the king out. One pawn pushed, you block, and you're good. And that could be a very large mistake because now you push back. Finally get to where you should have been. Uh, no, not here. See, this is still not right, guys. This is not right. He should have went here, and then he would have been able to attack from behind. So it's something that we could definitely teach. Um, we'll definitely be able to teach Murph how to do this correctly next time. Now he still gets to, there you go, you still get to survive. And better is here. Here. Not here. But he's attacking on the same plane, and there you go. King can't come in. King has to move away, and now you can just run away. Even with 25 seconds, he should be able to do this, guys. You just run away. Oh, oh my head is going to hurt. My head is going to hurt. Already, mine is already hurting. He's letting the king in. He just let the king in. Why is he letting the king in? Now he's got. Now you're going to go back and forth with a drawerish type situation again. Yeah, I don't know what's going on anymore. Could just take, take, and take. Yeah, that's a mistake. Could have taken, got both pawns and your king, and it should have been a draw. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep, but king, the... the yeah, the rook belongs behind the past pawns, Murph. So I'm going to put it on my shared screen. If you go to the shared screen, um, I can show you. What I'm talking about. So he did real well. This was this was very good, right? He he fell into this problem here. Beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful. Now you're winning. Now, first of all, the rook does not belong here. Rooks belong behind past pawns. So the correct move is here. He can't move his king here. He could come after you. He could do this or he could push. And let's say he pushes because past pawns want to be pushed. Pawn can't push anymore. Right? Do you see? Okay. All right. Yep. And he can't even protect it, so that would just be a lost pawn. So again, from, from, from here instead, you know, let's say he does what he did, which was good, right? I'm going to... Wow, you could have had me a couple times. I'm going to try to get a past pawn here. I know. My daughter just pointed out I could have had your queen. It's hard for me to <laughs> teach, Murph. They, they're talking. Um, but anyway, so you go. Keith, you and I have to play more often. And, and so now, Murph, you're here <laughs> well, again. Well, and look I'm, at the difference. We are well matched. That king cannot help. Here you just take its free pawn. Even right. here you don't care, right? Because he, he has to get, you can even do this. Here, green, it. Right? I mean, he's not going to get in. Um, and whenever you're ready, you start taking these pawns and those pawns. Now, if he goes here, you can say, okay, I'll go eat that pawn first, because this king still has no way to get to you. So you go eat that pawn, and then his king might say, oh, I'll go after your rook. You go, okay, I'll go away. And you just, you can start eating all these pawns. And you had this situation basically throughout the game, even with right. that. I had, a t I had a time difference. Yes, but here you go. Here you go. You, this is you right now. Making a good yeah. move. King cannot get here. The king cannot get here. The king can't, can't, can't. King only has these two moves. So you already got this. This pawn is under threat. You ignored this. 
I'm even okay with you ignoring that. Taking that is fine. Push, 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 back up. All right. If he pushes this way, you step up here. If he pushes this way, you step up here, right? And where you can never take the backward pawn, he also can't ever push it. So from here, he comes here to what? To try to threaten mates, right? I guess, right? Check. You would go here, then check, and then queen. So you can't let him say check. You'd have to move here or here. He still gets to check and he's gonna queen. So yes, you gotta stop him. So you went this way, but if you just went this way, where can his king go? If his king steps off to the left, your king can hold these two pawns by themselves. If he pushes, you step up. If he pushes this one, you step up. His king can't help. He's blocked out. So to to uh, but and now it's your move. So you could take the pawn. Again, if he pushes, you step up. His king can't even get in here. His best bet is going to be the queen. And then try to get his king over. But guess what? You still chase his queen king away. His king still can't go here. King has to go away. And now you know the pawn's going to fall. And if he doesn't push, and he says, well, uh, okay, I'll, I'll move here. Because he still can't get close to the pawn. And so you could just take again. And even if he says, well, I'll get close to my pawn. You go, okay, now I'll come over and chase you. Right? No worries. I'll chase you here. Or... So the key is to control that C file. No, the key is the rook belongs behind the pass pawns, not in front. Right, right. Or, behind the pass pawns so that you can control the C file and keep the king out. The principle is rook behind the pawns. In this particular case, yes, uh, the C file is critical. Okay. But if the king were over here and these pawns weren't here, then the F file would be critical. The concept is the king belongs, I mean, the rook belongs behind these pawns. I don't care about the king. Okay. If the king is way over here, the rook still belongs behind the pawns, not in front or on the side. So don't, you're, you're getting fixated on the C file in this particular case. But the rule that the rook belongs behind past pawns works all the time. Okay. So I want him behind here. And if it's my past pawns and, and not yours, I want my rook behind my pass pawn, not in front of my pass pawn. If it's in front of my pass pawn, it's in the way. So the simple principle, I, I don't want you trying to memorize how to finish this game. I want you to memorize the principle that the king, the rook belongs behind pass pawns so that when you're in this position, you don't put the rook here. You instead say, hey, I know I got to stay back here because it's behind the pawns. But I do want to, st I got to do something because he's going to mate me. So I got to check him. I'm going to check him this way. You only had two choices. You just picked the wrong one. That's all. You just picked the wrong okay. one. Yep. All right. And then even with picking the wrong one, you, at the end, you still had a chance. Boop, 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 boop. So right here, you still had a chance. You could have said check this way and he'd have to move away. You could just take, he take back and you take back. And now you guys are in, I draw, I should be a drawn game. Two pawns, two pawns, kings, right? So you could have fallen back to a drawn position well, without- With the rook advantage, I should have won, right? Well, if you kept your rook behind the pawns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he gave you chances to get that way again, right? Um, so like right here, right here, I'm sorry, don't go that far. Right here, you just go here. His king can't get back. The pawn can't push, you just take, and then you take this one. And without the king, these pawns are dead. All you can do is push these pawns. And eventually, you can eat them. So we would bring the rook over to the C, to the D file. No, no. No, you do not move to the D file. That allows the king to come over. Okay. You, if you go to the D file, the king comes over and stops your king from getting there. So where do you want me to go? Well, it's white's move. Where do you want white to go? Oh, it's white's move. I'm sorry. So let's say white moves here. Okay. Save one of his pawns. I take the pawn. 
So now what do you want? Now you come over. I'm threatening mate again. And I say, go away again. And you're like, dag, you did it to me again. All right, I'll go back again. Now it's Black's move. I'm going to step up. Because now the king can't get here again. No king. Thank you very much. Now it's White's move. What do you want him to do? You can move the king, right? And look, you only have one pawn to win, to beat. I think you know how to do this, right? Right. And you just go down a queen. This rook never has to move. Right, okay. Remember okay. what we, we've talked about, restricting the king from the action. And when the king is back here, we try to put our pig on the seventh to keep the king from getting out. But now your king is out. But look where all the action is. Can you at any point see a way to keep that king from the action? And if you can, you need to jump on that. So right here, this happened in the game. He's uh, detached from the action. And you can keep him out of the action. Even if you had went here, would have been better. Because then he would have attacked you. Maybe you would have said, okay, I'll go here. You just keep the king out of the action. And you win this game easily. But coming over here, you don't keep the king out of the action. In fact, you entice him to come closer. Right? You want to always be more than one move away from the king with a rook. Why put yourself next to where the rook, the king can come after you? And here, you just go away. This pawn can't go anywhere. You just take. And anytime you want, you move up here, and then the king can't even get close. So, right, so let's go back to, if you went here, let's just say you went here, you take, he comes back, you chase him again, and let's say he goes this way, right? But you could just say, fine, I still got this square, and if you push, we just take, we just take, you can't push, the best you could do is come after me, right? Where's the rook ball long? Behind. Where's the king going to go? And you know this ain't going to go anywhere. And now the king can't come over here. So now you make a pass pawn and you go. All about restricting the king. If you have a rook and your opponent only has a king, he only has one piece. Pawns are dangerous, but he has a piece. And you just need to keep that piece out of the game. And attacking the pawn, even from here, doesn't keep the king out of the game. I mean... It could. It might end up working for you. But, right? Because now you can still go and make a pass pawn. Because if he pushes, you take with the rook. But the rook is behind the pawns, so I'm happier. Right? All right? Yeah. All right. My, my, my concern when I was doing this with the time element was he's got three pieces attacking my king. And that's why I brought the rook to that side to get it. That's what I, I didn't realize that the king can hold off the two pawns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you got to remember, he really doesn't have three pieces attacking your king. He has two pawns trying to promote. And even if you thought of it as two pawns attacking your king, the king can't attack your king. Well, he's, he's helping. He's helping. So the best right. way to get rid of a helper is to remove him. <laughs> okay. Now, well, now, now, we know. now, now he now has two know. pawns against the king, and you've played pawns enough times. Yes. You should know two things. If you take this pawn, this pawn queens. Right. Okay. So other than, other than that, you should know I can't take this pawn or he queens. Now, if I put my rook here, then I'm threatening to take the pawn. But if I put my rook here, his king comes here, so you still can't take the pawn. So meantime, I could take candy. Because if he pushes, I take. And he can't push him without getting the king over here to protect. And after I take the candy, I can come back. Right. That's the trick. Okay. Yeah. But even if these guys weren't here, this is just so much easier. You don't even have to think. I'll just do this. This is easier. Now, eventually, because, right, if, if this were the actual situation you, and these pawns weren't here... You need to get rid of both of these pawns eventually. So, you know, you might come after him. In fact, from here, if this were the situation, there were no pawns, 
And let's say the king goes there. I'm going here. This still the keeps this still keeps the king out. And now I'm going to win this pawn, and you can't stop me. Actually, there is a problem because he could queen. Oops. So again, you don't want to put that rook near the king. Yeah. Would you go rook to b b two? So right here, I take this pawn. But if these pawns were not on the board, let's say those pawns are not on the board anywhere, um, I think I would do a waiting move. Okay, so you wouldn't push the king further back? No. Uh, oh, because he's here. Yeah, you could. No, no, you're good. You're good because you're like you're saying he'd have to go even further away. But I still need. But I still need my rook because I can't take this one. Now I guess I could do this. Right? Because then when he comes back, I just take. So yeah. Yeah, in that exact scenario, yes, I like that. Push him away, and then I put my rook on this file. Because that way there's no way the rook, can, the king can attack my rook. The king can't protect the pawn. I'm going to take this pawn, and then we take that pawn, imagining that these other two pawns are not in, in the game. Uh, but that is, and that was because he went this way. Let's say he went this way. So if you went this way, then he'd come back to protect. So here I'd almost, again, no pawns over here on the right. I'd probably just do a waiting move. Because I want him to move here so I can say check. And that way I don't have to worry about the queen queening. Right? So let's say he goes here. Then he can't get back to attack. And even if he had went up, let's say he goes here and I take. Then he comes after my rook because now he's still tricky, right? If he goes here, if I don't do anything else. Yeah, but I, yeah, it's my move, right? That's the problem, right? right? It's it's your move, so it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, so yeah, in the in the scenario you said from here, since you can, since the king has got, since it's opposition, if the king were here, it's opposition. So yeah, you could come over here and push him away even further, and then you could just come right on back. You still have to come back to stop the pawn. But yeah, so but the the concept and the simple print you don't have to remember all this. These kind of games should happen once in your lifetime probably. Um, is to get the rook, but you're gonna have rooks against pawns probably a lot, and you want to get that rook behind the pawns, behind the past pawns, and you want your king in a better square. The king never took this square. I think you had opportunity. Maybe you had opportunities. I don't remember because you it was kind of funky how you were moving around. So he's, he chases your, and he's still, and yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's just, right, that was just bad. Because now he's going to push with check and then push again and queen. Right. So I was just, this was like horrible. Because this is the pawn you have to worry about because he's got check. And you weren't, if you were here at least, then, right. But of course, he's keeping you from being there. So yeah, this, this, was, this was a mistake altogether. But again, his king isn't here right now. So you even had time to do it now. Because wherever his king goes, you can then say check. And remember, his king can't get in. And his king were here, he can't get in. So he either goes this way or he goes this way. And if he goes this way, your king just steps up. If he goes this way, your king just steps up. No matter where he goes at this point. So you, you could have even done it here when he chased your rook, because he's not protecting. You could say, I got a free move. Because he can't push the pawn, I got a free move. King comes back. Ah, no, I'm sorry, went too far. Ah, I made it. I'm where I want to be. Actually, this doesn't hurt. This is actually playable, much more playable than what you ended up with. Because if you ever push it, you still just take. Right? This is simpler because it pushes him away, and then your king just takes the square, and then you just make a pass pawn. Um, and you can take these guys at your whim. But this also works because he can never push him then. Right? If you just sat back here, away from the king, he can never push him. So that's why I'm saying it's not just the C. C works, but so does D. If your rook's on D, you win the game. Interesting. Good. It should be interesting. Yeah. All right, good night, Chess Wizard. Hey, Z Bean, how are you? It's always Marvel. No, we do DC, Marvel. It just depends. This one happens to be Marvel, yes.
Yeah, Montague. Yeah, well, yeah, you can get a lot better at tactics. All right, guys. So there you go. I uh, hope that was a good lesson. We went over time, but uh, I can use all of this because the language is good. Good night, Janet. Oh, she already left. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully that was a good lesson for you guys. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank we'll you. see you next week. We will uh, go over some of these, but we will be uh, going over major pieces for one more lesson. And then we start getting into other interesting things like opening goals, how to play the opening. All right, guys. We will see you later. Thanks, Marty. Good job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. All right, so I'm going to leave that meeting. Um, oh, they, they're all leaving too.